Hi, I'm Rachel Huffman, and this is my husband, Jared Huffman, and we have three amazing kids. We have two girls, um, Gemma's almost seven, Lydia's almost six, and we have a boy, Jackson, he's three, and they're pretty much your normal rambunctious kids, but uh, Jackson also has spina bifida, and we would like to tell you his story. Well, we found out we were pregnant right away because um, we'd been trying and I was really excited. Uh, we were going for a boy this time. And um, it was late July that we went for the ultrasound that determines gender, that you can find out gender. And we found out that we were having a boy, which we were excited. We had two girls and um, got a phone call uh, maybe a week later. Uh, that we needed to go for a more detailed ultrasound. They took us in a little room and they told us that he has spina bifida and didn't really kind of had heard of it but didn't know a lot about it. They, um, they gave us the option of terminating the pregnancy, which we definitely did not want to do. Um, so they also told us about the option of repairing Jackson's back in the womb. Basically what spina bifida is, is um, a problem with the back closing correctly, the skin over the spine. So his spine was hanging out of his back. They now can repair in the womb, which is uh, very difficult to qualify for. There's lots of hoops to jump through. and. Um, it's also very risky because a lot of women deliver very early, even the same week. I went to Cincinnati and um, Jared came with me, had the surgery, which is where they um, basically just expose the part of the back they need. They don't take him completely out of the womb. They just um, make an incision and then they put a patch right there on the back to close this opening. We got through the rest of the pregnancy, went really well, and uh, they have to take him C-section early because they don't want you to go into labor because that can harm, harm him and the repair that they did. So, it was 34 weeks. They um, took him out C-section, and um, he was the only little preemie in the NICU with rolls all over. Yeah, he's like six and a half pounds. <laughs> yes, he was. He was little, but he was roly-poly. So this little six-pounder came to us, and he. Um, needed a lot of help with his eating and breathing and figuring all that out. And I got to stay in the Ronald McDonald house. It was just um, right across the street from the hospital. I had to spend Thanksgiving away from the family, but I didn't miss any birthdays. And right before Christmas, I just kept praying, Lord, please let us come home, come home for Christmas. It gave a lot of perspective because there was really nothing wrong with Jackson um, that would be life-threatening. So um, it kind of brought me out of my pity party a little bit and, um, and just helped me to see that uh, God had us the whole time. God would just make a way and smooth it over and it was like he was weaving this tapestry and taking the bad and making it beautiful somehow. They saw on um, the tests that they run on his brain, the imaging, that he, um, he was going to need a shunt to regulate the flow of the spinal fluid from brain to spine. And um, so in February, We'd only been home for two months. Uh, we had to go back and have brain surgery. It, it went okay. Um, 
nothing went wrong, so that was good. So they cut away um, the big circle that was there from the original patch. At that time, that he decided that he was gonna learn to talk because he didn't have anything else to do. So um, he just started talking and never stopped, and he talks so well for a three-year-old. Hi. So there is a fluid pocket on the spine now, which is another common problem with spine bifida. And they have been monitoring it because uh, the size that it is right now is not a problem, but um, if it grows, it could put pressure on the spine and decrease his mobility. They also, along with the imaging, had him repeat a manual muscle test, which is basically um, asking him to move in different ways and see if he can and comparing it to his baseline that they took in the hospital, comparing it to the last manual muscle test that he did and just kind of seeing uh, where he's at as far as his mobility. And he rocked it. He did so well. The doctor was super impressed um, with his ability to move in different ways that he really should not be able to move in. The doctor also said that he's moving so well that he could easily see him walking either maybe with just one hand crutch or a cane or nothing at all. We go to an amazing church with um, prayer warriors and um, we've actually used Facebook quite a lot to send out prayer requests to um, people who might not go to our church or might not know what's going on and um, every time he's got an appointment coming up or we might have um, a scare uh, as far as our limited ability to see what's to come uh, we always send it out on the prayer chain and update the church and um, they go to their knees for us in prayer and God hears them and he listens. He's just, he's so faithful. I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, he's just showing us that he's got some really big plans for Jackson. And um, I think it's cool that Jackson can reach a whole different crowd of people with um, the challenges that he faces and uh, just how he does look different. He walks with a walker. You don't see a lot of three-year-olds walking around using a walker or um, wearing braces. There's not a, a whole lot in our, at least in our small community. Um, but he's just so friendly that he will walk by any stranger and just say, hey, what's your name? Um, where's your car? Because he always wants to know where your car is. He loves cars, loves trucks kind of like God blessed him in, um, in other ways. It just makes up for any physical um, challenges that he'll face. Um, okay, so uh, they couldn't answer most of our questions because every kid's so different, but they did give us a lot of, um, he probably won't walk, you know, he, he will probably use a wheelchair, um, he might stand, um, and Jackson's just kind of blown the doors off of all those. It's really transformed me, it's softened my edges, and i um, still growing, still learning, but um, it helped me to understand better that um, I am his child, and I, um, all the things that my kids do that I'm like, why are you doing that still, are the things that he could easily look at me and say the same thing. But um, after having two typical um, births and kids, uh, having Jackson was, um, it, it took me out of the typical mundane everyday you know, read your Bible, pray, and um, it really thrust me forward towards God more um, and took me 
deeper and help me to see that um, I need to stop relying so much on me even when I don't realize I'm doing it just to get through the day and really rely on him.